Hey everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Now, I want to go over how you can really easily calculate this year versus last year, or do any time comparison, to be honest. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques here uh, that, that you can utilize. You know, this is some of the easiest stuff you can do in Power BI, uh, and some of the first examples that you should work through as you're learning how to operate DAX effectively, especially in Power BI Desktop, okay? And so first things first, just a really quick recap here of, of how you should try and set up your models. I have this, you know, this is the waterfall technique that I talk a lot about. You know, it, it can be called a snowflake sometimes as well, but I like this concept of waterfall of filters sort of flowing down, um, and I've got my date table. Now your date table is absolutely key here, right? You do not want to be calculating this off uh, these sort of time intelligence calculations without a date table. Um, you have to have a good date table. Definitely check out a lot of enterprise DNA content around date tables um, if you want to learn how to set up one really effectively and really quickly too. Okay, so getting into this. Now, I'm going to just create, uh, use a table here to begin with so that we can actually review the numbers. Okay, and you'll see here that I've got my slicer selected on 2016 here as well. Okay, now uh, instead of sales here, I'm going to create another core measure. Now I go on about these core measures quite a bit. And um, you know the core measures are your simple measures, right? And I'm going to go total quantity here. I'm literally going to sum up the quantity column, which is in my sales table. So to me, this is, this is I don't even have to think too much about this. I just think of it as like a core measure and then I can branch out into all of these other calculations like time intelligence calculations or moving averages, dynamic grouping, all of these other different sort of patterns, formula combinations. I can easily um, utilize my core measures in those. Okay, it's just sort of reusing the patterns over and over again. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to drag my total quantity in here. Okay. Now I can... Now that I've got this, I can then very quickly go and calculate my last year's quantity, right? Okay, so I can go, I'm going to call this one quantity, just our Y for last year. And then this is where I can use a function called calculate. Now calculate is the most important function in the DAX formula language. It enables you to change the context of a calculation, okay? So what I want to do is I still want to calculate that total quantity, but I want to do it in a previous time frame, okay? And this first example I'm going to show you this simple function called same period last year it does exactly what it says it says it returns a set of dates in the current selection from the previous year so basically by putting this inside of calculate I'm able to cal uh, bring my qu a quantity on one time frame into another time frame and this particular function makes me allows me to do it exactly one year difference okay i'm going to show you in a second a better combination a better function i believe to use than this but i'm going to just show you this one because i don't want you to get too confused if you actually see it okay so quantity last year i'm going to drag that in so now basically i am comparing um my quantity that i sold this year on the first of the first 2016 to what I sold last year, first of the first 2015. So if I click on 2015 here, you'll see that this first number should be 115. And then I come through here. And now, like, why do you do this? It's because you can now run comparisons, right? You can actually work out, well, what was the difference this year versus last year? Okay. And from that, I can do this. Okay. I can say um, quantity, very quickly, quantity diff um, year on year. Okay. And then all I need to do is this, check this out, total quantity minus quantity last year. I can just reference my measures within measures. This is called measure branching. This is why I term measure branching, right? And now I can see that this, this calc, um, which has been dynamically generated but from these measures here, right? There's nothing hard coded because when I click on 2017, I'm going to see the difference. There was no, there was nothing done in 2014. So it only, so in this particular case, it's only really ref, um, with this particular data set. It's pretty, it's pretty, um, uh, pretty generic old data set. I probably need to refresh a lot of these data sets actually. Um, and, you know, now I can see the difference and we can turn that into a visualization quite easily. Okay. And then I'm going to copy this and get rid of these. And now I can get the quantity difference on a daily basis. Okay, so maybe, you know, and we might want to filter this down a little bit more. Maybe we want to create another slicer here that enables me to um, 
enables me to select a specific month, right? And we can sort of see on a monthly basis. And remember what you can also do is if you can also change the context within here. So um, I probably should update, you know, this column name should be updated. But, you know, if I wanted to not select anything there, I can actually see the monthly difference very easily without having to change any of my calculations. Okay, so now I want to show you, like, so I just showed you there how to use the same period last year function. Now, there is a function called date add, which enables you to do this as well. And I prefer date add because it is more versatile. And for this, I want to jump, I want to jump quickly to the analyst hub. Okay, so the analyst hub is enterprise DNA's, um, web-based application to support your power bi development your productivity right okay so within here we have a range of different apps and i've got a my date add um, i'm just going to do a search here my date add function or formula pattern is already embedded in here right and so instead of me writing it out i'm just going to come in here and i've got see i know that this is this is sales last year but i can still copy it right i'm going to copy it bring it into my model go new measure And I'm gonna, um, I can't name it the same as I did with the other ones. So I'm gonna just actually write this out in full. And so all I needed to do was change the parameters in here, right? Instead of total sales, I'm gonna say total quantity. And then just like that, I have this new quantity last year calculation, which is basically gonna um, uh, ret return exactly the same number. If we bring it in here, it's gonna return exactly the same number here. But date add, you know, the benefits of using date add is the versatility. And there's um, other content about this on on um, through in, on Enterprise DNA's platform you, or through other ways we distribute content. Um, I highly recommend reviewing all of, all the variations that date add allow you to create around time comparison. And you know, there is literally no difference between this calculation here and the same period last year function. There's, there's really no difference. It's just that date add can be more versatile. Um, and I, I just wanted to show you that example just, just to um, minimize any confusion there. Um, but also just as a recommendation, a recommendation around using the analyst hub effectively to bring in or just to, to be able to save all your patterns and bring them in. You saw, you saw how quickly I was, I was able to do that. Uh, and then, um, you know, also just making sure that you are using the most efficient function that you can possibly use for each different uh, scenario. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover. Um, you know, just get using, start using this technique. As I said, right at the start, it's one of the first things that you should be uh, exploring uh, within um, Power BI from a calculation point of view, because you can very quickly do quite interesting analysis, um, especially with all the additional filters, etc. you can place on your data when you build um, an optimized data model in the background. Okay, good luck with this one. All the best. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators. Uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.